Hey everybody, welcome back to Mixing Music Analog and MixingMusicAnalog.com and here on our YouTube channel. And this time out, we got our good buddy Dave over here to my right. Came all the way up from New York City again. Not the city. Well, you know what I mean, <laughs> the pastors of New York. Uh, and in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to do something really cool. We are going to compare, sound-wise, the difference between the three. Audioscape 1176, 1170, 1176 compressors, the 76A, the 76D, and the 76F. And we're going to listen to it on acoustic guitar, keyboards, and vocals so we can hear the difference between these three units because they're really, really cool and they have subtle differences. And now you'll get a chance to hear the difference between the three. Before we get to that, though, if you like what you see in the video, please hit subscribe and share and like and also consider hitting the thanks button right next to the thumbs up. Thanks button will give us a little donation to help support the channel so we can continue to bring these videos to you at no charge to you. And thank you so much in advance for doing so. So what we have going on here in Studio One, if we look over here in Studio One, we have three sets of tracks here. Over here in light blue, we have these three blue tracks that are acoustic guitars. We took an acoustic guitar track, we duplicated it twice. The first one is coming out to a channel on the board next to Dave here, the 76A. Next to that, 76D, and then the 76F. All of the EQs are perfectly flat. There is no other processing whatsoever. We have the faders all at the same volume and we've level matched everything. So the differences in volume between the three should be almost nothing. At least we can't really hear a difference. So that's, we did that the best we could. Your job in this video is going to keep your eye on the solo button and we're going to be able to solo between the three in real time so you can hear the differences. Over in the rack, which should come up on the screen here in a second, Dave's got the compressors set up how, Dave? Uh, the compressors are all set up with, at this point with the attack and release times at 12 o'clock. Medium, and so that's medium attack, medium release. Yeah. So okay. they're, they're basically kind of a neutral attack, neutral release. Uh, they are each set, the inputs are set on each one to put the compression right around five to seven on some of the bigger hits. Okay. Okay, but it should always be compressing the way I have it set. And then I have the output set so that it gain match the three units together. Interestingly enough, even though that they're all 1176 units, those knobs are all at different points. Like in other, in other words, like the uh, input on the on the blue stripe is at 30, but the input on the F type is down at 48. So the, with the, they're, they're different units. They are reacting differently to the same program material coming in. Figured it'd be better for this comparison to have them compressing at around the same level yeah. and then coming out at the same level. So they're definitely not set to the same, same input. Right, so all these three units are built the same in that they all use Cinemag transformers, new chick connectors. According to their spec sheets here that we pulled out, um, everything looks pretty much the same, but obviously there's some, they don't give you a breakdown of every component in the unit. So there must be some subtle differences in the way they're built because they are being replicated uh, by the actual period correct original pieces. So in the rack, you will see uh, four 1176s, the two on the left, the top one on the left, that is the 76A, that's the blue stripe. The one underneath that is the silver face with the black stripe, that's the 76F. And then on the bottom right, you will see the black face, which is the 76D. The top right is the Black Lion Audio Bluey Compressor, which is not a part of this demonstration. We'll do another video on that in the future. So we're only looking at the three Audioscape units. So let's start with this acoustic guitar. Keep your eye on the solo button. We're gonna start with the 76A, and then we're gonna to go to the D, and then we're gonna to go to the F. Let us know in the comments below what you hear. If you hear any differences, you should be listening to this on a good set of studio monitors or a good set of headphones, and then we'll kind of talk about what we're hearing. So here we go. I'm hearing on the A that it has a much more pronounced and open top end, definitely the brightest of the three. Uh, the D is 
really warm, a lot more bottom end. For that matter, on this one, when he, on the, some of the biggest hits that he's doing on it, it gets a little woofy in the low end. And on the F, it's not it's it's not as much low end as the D, more than the end than the A, but it's also got to me like a much more pronounced upper mid push to it. Um, I would probably not. I probably wouldn't choose the D for an acoustic guitar for that for those reasons. The other two would be fine for it. But uh, there's definitely like like it's basically like like three levels of bright to dark. Yeah. So it, yeah, that, and that's what I said too. It sounds like the D's the warmest, the A's the brightest, and the F kind of sits somewhere in the middle yeah. to me, in a very subtle way. But it is a little bit different from an EQ perspective. Um, at least the way we have our attack time set right now, which is straight up the middle, which is a kind of a medium attack. It seems like all three respond to the transient pretty equally. Yeah. Um, so listen to that again, and then we'll start tweaking the attack time a little bit, but let's listen to that again, uh, and see what you guys are hearing. So we'll start off with the A. Yeah, so that's what I'm hearing. It, there's definitely three, le, three different EQ curves s slightly in the way it re, in the way it responds. Oddly enough, though, it seems to me like the seven, the blackface, the D version, seems like that clamps the transient a little bit more to me than the F does. I think on the harder hits it does. Yeah, for sure. on, the, on that yeah. on that on that real heavy transient, yeah. it seems to me like the D clamps a little bit faster, even mm -hmm. though the attack times and the release times on all three units are the same according to the spec sheet. Yeah. So even though they're all at 12 o'clock, they all should be right around the same millisecond attack, mm -hmm. but just the way I think the compressor is reacting yeah. to it is yeah. uh, is a little different. And we're doing about how much compression right now? Uh, we're hitting between five and seven for the most part on the heavier hits, but it's always up above one and two. Okay, so now yeah. if we were to go to a fast attack, which would be all the way to the right, would be number seven on an 1176. Um, and that's going to give us more compression, but we'll leave the release the same. And this ought to give us a little bit more, maybe a little more audible on how it's really hitting that transient, that initial transient. Acoustic guitars are good because they're very transient heavy. See how it kind of reacts to the transient. So let's start with the 76A and then we'll move through the three again. Here we go. Fast attack really darkened up the F. Yeah, it did. It darkened up the F a lot. Right. Uh, definitely clamps down. They all three are clamping down on the on the heavier heavier hits a lot harder as you would expect. Uh, it really didn't affect the A that much. It definitely darkened up the F a lot. Yeah, it's a little bit darker. So now, what if we go to the other extreme and go a slow attack, which is going to be all the way to the left? And that's going to give us, with the transient's going to poke through a little bit more, we should get the least amount of compression on this. And again, we'll start with the A and we'll rotate through the three. Here we go with the uh, 76A, which again is the top left-hand corner, which is the blue stripe.
Yeah, so to me that it the D the D definitely it's the tra clamps the transient a little harder. Even on the slowest setting. Even on the slowest setting. It seems yeah. like to me there's more compression on that initial transient on the D, the black face, as opposed to the other two. The 76 definitely continues to sound brighter. It almost seems, the perception can be it's actually a little bit louder, but it really isn't. It's, mm -hmm. it's not really louder, it's just that the EQ curve is a little bit different. Um, but all three of them sound yeah, it's fu it's funny, but I t to me on the slow setting it it actually accentuates the difference between the three of them. The A is brighter, the 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 D is warmer, and the F is more mid range heavy on the slowest setting. That 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 difference between the three of them is actually accentuated at the slowest setting. The A on the slowest setting really bright. You know, like that transient's really coming through on it, and that's just really brightening it up. Right, so now let's try one more. Let's try the release, fast release, which will be all the way to the right. So I have a fast attack, fast release, which is slow attack right now. You want what do you want? Slow attack. Oh yeah, fast is that release? what you got? Yeah, let's do a let's do a fast attack and a fast release, just because it's a heavy transient kind of material. So it'll just it'll clamp down quicker and then it'll release quick, just to see what that does. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to start in the seventy six A, and then we'll move through. I think now the differences between the three of them has decreased. Yeah, I, I tend to like out of out of those. Well, let me ask you this: out of those yeah. three, which one? Which is your favorite of the three? If you had to pick uh, one across the board, I like the A the best of the three on on the acoustic guitar. On on the slower attack settings, or on the medium attack setting, I like the F better. Mm -hmm. On the fast attack setting, I like the A better. I don't like the D on an acoustic guitar for any of them. Okay, it's I'll, just not know. working for me at all. I like the F um, better. I just tend to, I don't know. It's, it seems like because it sits in the middle, it's got a little bit of grit to it. It's not as bright as the A. Um, and again, we're doing all this in solo. We're obviously not doing it in the context of the mix, which is where you'd want to do this. But because we're trying to give you the demonstration of the way the three units sound different from each other, mm -hmm. we're doing it in solo, which is the, you know, which, yeah. is, the, which is the worst way to, to be picking yeah. which compressor you're going to use. Yeah. But uh, just in solo in and of itself, I tend to like the F. It seems mm -hmm. like it's got a little bit of grit to it. It's a little bit warm and a little toppy, but not not too much top as the A and not too warm as the D, yeah. to me. I mean, yeah. it's just so, but I mean, they're all really good. Mm -hmm. And I've used all three of them in different mixes and different instruments. But on this particular example, I would have to go with the F. That's mine. What do you guys think? Let us know below. So now that's acoustic guitar. So what we're gonna do is through the magic of television, we're gonna pause for a second. We're gonna reset up uh, cause we need to patch everything into the keyboard track. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do the same test on a grand piano. So we'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, we're back. So now what we have set up here in studio one is we have a grand piano. And just like in the last section, we have three tracks here. We have the purple tracks is what you're gonna be looking at this time. The first one is the key 76A. 76D, 76F. You're going to go ahead and you're going to keep your eye on the solo button. Where is our attack and release set? We're right back at we're back at noon. Back, back at noon. So medium attack, medium release. We're going to listen to this grand piano part. You guys let us know in the comments what you think as far as which one you like better. And we'll let you know what we think as soon as we're done listening. Here we go. I hear the uh, 76A is again a little bit brighter, 
to me than the 76D. The 76F uh, seems like, again, it kind of sits right in the middle for me um, between the A and the D. I also feel like the D, again, just like with the acoustic, it feels like it clamps down the transient just a little bit more at the same attack setting. And we're compressing about how much on this? We're hitting it hard. It's getting, it's hitting up around seven, eight, you know, seven-ish. Okay. It's, it's getting hit hard. So that's what I'm hearing. We, we wanna, what are you hearing there? Uh, pretty much the same. The, the A is definitely brighter. Um, the A also just feels like it's kind of gritting up a little bit or maybe even a little bit of distortion on it when it's really getting hit hard. In this case, I think it's where the frequency level is hitting it. Uh, the D is warmer. The F is definitely a little more mid-forward again. The F just pushes out a little bit further, just a little bit. Um, but I, almost like on this one, like the differences are almost less than they were on the last one to me, because I think because of the 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 pro the the piano is playing a much wider frequency range. Yes, so. I, I don't hear as much of a difference between the three as I did on the acoustic guitar for me. But I could still hear a difference, but it seems like it's a little little less obvious. Yeah. Let's listen to that again. So we're gonna, we're gonna start with the A, go to the D, then the F. So it sounds like the A is a little yeah. bit brighter. Yeah, and the A, it sounds to me like the A and a little bit less so with the F are kind of accentua accentuating an unpleasant part of the sustain. Yeah, I would agree. I, yeah, I could definitely hear something in that where it gets a little bit too bitey to me, a little, yeah. bit, a little bit gritty in there. Yeah, we're at the D seems to be smoothing all of that out. Yeah, now we are hitting it, what, about 5 dB of compression? Uh, harder than that, I think. We're yeah, hitting, we're hitting it harder. Yeah. We're, we're hitting, hitting it hard. attack right now. So now yeah. we're gonna go to, let's go to a fast attack. We'll go fast. Fast attack, keep the same release, and we'll we'll go, we're probably gonna get, we may, we'll see how much compression we get, and we'll just see what it does, because we can always dial back the input side of it, but let's just leave everything else the same and see what that does, just for the hell of it. So, here we got the fastest attack, still a medium release, and we'll start off with the 76A, here we go. Almost, you, you can use any one of those. I yeah, mean, I was actually going to say, is it just me or did the A and the F just get almost as warm as the D? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. That's by, you know, by uh, speeding up the attack uh, to its fastest setting. Um, yeah, like we were saying earlier, it's like having, it's not like there are three different flavors of ice cream. It's the same flavor by three different manufacturers. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like yeah. Carvel, Ben and Jerry's, Hockey <laughs> Dots, yeah. but it's all still chocolate. You know what I mean? It's not way, way different. Um, and you could you could use any one of those, and it would sound yeah. great. I mean, it I, sounds I, great. Would, I would tend towards the D. Was it me on on you I know think so. on, uh, just like just listening to it in soul here? Yeah. I would tend to lean towards more towards the D. The A gets rattly. The the F gets a little bit weird in the mid range on those sustained notes. That D just just levels it out nicely all the way across yeah, to me. Yeah, it, it seems like it clamps down the transient yeah. a little bit more yeah. uh, quickly and it smooths it out a little bit more. And because um, it's got that warmness, that, that yeah. nice warm sound that yeah. makes a piano just sound beautiful. Mm -hmm. You want to so, do like a slow attack, fast release just to see yeah, what happens with it? Or you, now you're on fast attack. What if you just went to a fast release? Fast attack, fast just release? To see what, just to see what would happen. And then we'll take a break and then we'll do the same thing on a lead vocal and see if we hear anything more or different. Slow, slow attack isn't going to do much on a piano, is it? 
It shouldn't. Well, I yeah. mean, it, it's still gonna compress, but it's not gonna compress yeah. the transient nearly as much. Yeah. So here we go, here's the 76A. on that that's not that's a slow a slow attack no that's fast attack fast release fast attack fast release uh the d and the f are almost identical to my ears right now the a is still bright and rattly yeah it's still brighter and yeah, yeah there is a, a little section in there where you hear it you hear it break up a little bit yeah I mean, so, yeah, I, like I said, it's, we're it's, hitting it pretty hard. I mean, yeah, we're smashing it. I know yeah. that. I know that, but you know, we're, we're trying to get the, we're trying to get the most out of it on this track. Right. So like I said, yeah, I mean, the differences are definitely much narrower mm -hmm. here. Uh, actually the difference between the D and the F was almost negated to me on the fast release setting. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, if I, if I was going to choose one, I'd still take the D over the other two. Okay, so now, so what we'll do is one more pass, and this time let's put let's let's do um let's put the release back to medium, twelve dune, right. and then let's put the attack at like fastest attack would be seven. So let's back it off to like maybe three o'clock, okay. and that'll give us kind of a medium fast release, a medium fast attack, which is you know, you know, usually you're going to be fast or medium fast in something like a staccato kind of a grand piano. So it's not going to be the fastest attack, but it'll give us a little bit more than that medium. There you go, I gotta get out of the yeah. track. Here you go. go. Trying to do this so we don't bump all the cameras and stuff. Um, and then let us know in the comments again what you guys think, and then we'll take a quick break and we'll set up the lead vocal and then we'll end this video. But again, these are all great compressors. Um, and I've used all three of these in many, many mixes now on different instruments, and they sound good on everything. They're really good, mm -hmm. really good quality pieces. They do a really good job. All right, so okay. that's that's three o'clock and twelve o'clock. Three o'clock and twelve o'clock. Let's start with the 76A. Here we go. On that one. Interestingly to me, at this, it's on this particular instrument, it's way more about the release time than the attack time. Mm -hmm. Because again, now we're back to that same thing where I'm hearing that unpleasantness in the sustain on the F and the D on the A and the and the D is leveling all that out. So now you have it on what a medium release? Yeah, I have a straight up 12 o'clock release. 12 o'clock, so it's a medium release. Yeah, yeah, to me, the D is the, uh, the winner on this on this instrument for sure. Yeah. I like the D the best. The yeah, it's just, it's, 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 it's just interesting that, especially on this instrument, I guess it's because it's much more sustainy. It's yep. just, the, this is this one's way more about the release. Right. You know, right, than right. it is, then it, I, I would tune the attack in to, kill, to, to get the transits where I want them, and then I would just tune the release right. until I was happy with where it was, you know? Okay, so why don't we do that? You want to do that? You want to just tweak the, we'll stick on the A? Just get Let the release me, uh, to where you think it should be. Yeah, okay, give me the A. I'm going to leave it on, leave it where it is on the attack, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring the release down. Okay, fast fastest is release. Now set all the other ones to the same thing. Yeah. That's that's your sweet spot for the release. That is on that one, yeah. Okay. Okay, so now they're all they're all fastest release. They're all three o'clock. Okay, we'll do one more pass and then we'll do the vocals. So let's go back here and let's listen to that. So our attack time is where? 
Uh, three o'clock on the attack, fastest fast. release. Fastest release, medium fast attack. Here we go. We'll start with the 76A. To me, the A is not is the least of the three on this, yeah, on this one. Yeah, agreed. The A, the A is just not working on that instrument at yeah, all. I like it, the D. I like the D as well, but I, yeah. I, it is interesting that to me, as I said, this particular instrument, it's all about the release time. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, the, the attack, the the attack is not having nearly as much effect on it to me as the release time is. So let us know what you think in the comments below. So now again, with the magic of TV, we're gonna take a quick break, we're gonna come back and we're gonna do the same thing on a lead vocal and then we'll end this little test here. Let us know what you think below. And while you're waiting for us to come back, why don't you go over to Audioscape's website? All the links will be in the description box below and see what he has in stock because these things are all very affordable and they all sound good. They are They are all very That's good. That's just what different, what flavor of ice cream do you want? So we'll be back in a second. Okay, we're back. So now we're going to do the last part of this test. We're gonna do the same thing on lead vocal. So if you're this far into the video, you know how it goes. We're watching the yellow tracks here. You're gonna keep your eye on the solo button. It's the same order, 76A, 76D, 76F on three different faders on the board. Dave, what's our settings on the compressor to start? Uh, we went full fast attack. And we went back to 12 o'clock on the release. Okay, so medium attack, a medium release, fast attack. We're hitting it pretty good now. We're hitting this lead vocal pretty good. This vocal is pretty aggressive, a little bit dynamic. So let's hear the difference between the three. Then you let us know in the comments what you think. Here we go. We'll start with the A. Help me dry all my tears and help me I lay all my fears and help me I think I am falling to see anybody hear me calling help me dry all my tears and help me I lay all my fears and help me I think I am falling to see anybody hear me calling I'm alright as I pick up the pieces that I left in me I'm alright being away from you and I'll be fine Cleaning out the corner Put it back in order I know I will always have this too Oh yeah And I'm alright As I pick up the pieces that I left in me I'm alright Be away from you And I'll be fine Cleaning out the corner Put it back in order But know I will always have this too Thanks I think it works on all three of them. Uh, it's basically, what do you want the vocal to be? Do you want it to be light and airy? Use the A. Do you want it to be warm? Use the D. If you want it to be very like mid forward, use the F. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There it is. You know, I mean, they, it, it, it sounded great on all three of them. Yeah, I, li I like the F. I tend to, um, every mix I've done since I've had these three compressors, the vocals I've been putting on the F a lot on different tracks. And I just somehow, it just I just like the way the F sounds on a lead vocal. I don't know why. Because I think it's like you said, it kind of sits in the middle of, it's not too open on the top. It's not too warm and round. It's kind of in that middle range, at least mm -hmm. for me, at least on a male vocal. What I will say, I have not used these three compressors on female vocals yet because all my projects at this point just happens yeah. to be a male vocalist, mm -hmm. but um, female vocals might be a little different. Let's listen to that again, and you guys let us know uh, what you think. Here we go. So we're gonna keep the same attack and release settings. We'll start with the A. Help me dry all my tears and Help me I lay all my fears in Help me I think I am falling To see anybody hear me calling Help me dry all my tears and Help me I lay all my fears in Help me I think I am falling To see anybody hear me calling I'm alright As I pick up the pieces that I left in me I'm alright Being away from you and I'll be fine Cleaning out the corner, put it back in order I know I will always have this too Oh yeah, and I'm alright 
As I pick up the pieces that I left in me, I'm alright. Be away from you, and I'll be fine. Cleaning out the corner, putting back in order. But no, I will always have this too. Yeah, I could see why you like the F. I just love, I love the yeah. F on male vocals, man. Yeah. I don't know why. It's just got yeah. that little bit of upper mid mm -hmm. range push, but it's not honky at all. Yeah, it's, it, you know, it's funny too, because like if you were, it, it, like where do you want, I mean, you always want to feature a vocal in a mix. Yeah, yeah of course. But it's like, where do you want the vocal to project? If you want it to project in that mid range, that, mm -hmm. you know, that, that real mid forward in your face vocal, that F will do it. Yeah, it seems like it's yeah. like between 2K and about 3.5K. It's somewhere like it yeah. just seems like that nice little sweet spot just mm -hmm. pushes that vocal. Yeah, and it's, it's going to push it above the guitars. It's yeah. going to push it above the drums. Yeah, I like it. Again, you we're know? not doing it in the context of a mix, but yeah. I've noticed that even in a full, pretty mm -hmm. dense mix with male vocals, yeah. I go to the 76F and it just kind of puts it right out there and kind of lets it sit right on top. I kind of like that a lot. Yeah, I could, like I said, I can definitely see where you like it. The D, if I think for a male vocal, I think the D might be a little bit too warm. For this male vocal, mm -hmm. it might be a little bit too warm. Again, the the A is, you know, if, you're, if you want a nice airy open vocal, that A is going to give it to you. The yeah. D to me on this particular voice may be a little too warm. Like if I had the choice between the three of them, I would go for the F first, and then if I needed more air, I'd switch over to the A. Right. But the D, I probably wouldn't use. But yeah, like you say, on a different voice, it's going to be it's going to be react differently for that particular yeah. reason. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I can definitely. To me, all three of them are good. It's just a yeah. matter of where where do you want it to end up. Yeah, I think you they know? sound great, and it, I think in this example there's a much more audible difference in this than it was in the keyboards and in the acoustic guitar. For me. Definitely, definitely for me as well. So you can yeah. hear it like it's instant. And yeah. you know, usually that's vocals are usually a good example of that. So we'll try it one more time. We'll run it through. Um, what do we have it on a fast attack? What if we just brought it to 12 o'clock, medium attack? You want to slow the yeah, attack down? Yeah, just a little bit. Um, so we're doing medium attack, medium release, and then we're going to go one more pass and then we're going to head out of this video. So um, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, yeah. So that's right. medium attack, medium release, which means we're going to have a little less compression because we were hitting pretty hard last time. Yeah, yeah we're smashing mm -hmm. it. I know that, but which it's is, a vocal. Which is good, and it's, yeah. you know... It's, it's a vocal. You want to you want you be and, aggressive. And by hitting it a little harder, too, we're getting a little more color of the compressor itself, which is always yep. a good thing. So yep. we're going to start with the, uh, with the A. Here we go. Help me dry all my tears and Help me I lay all my fears in Help me I think I am falling Does anybody hear me calling? Help me dry all my tears and Help me I lay all my fears in Help me I think I am falling Does anybody hear me calling? I'm alright As I pick up the pieces that I left in me I'm alright Be away from you and I'll be fine Cleaning out the corner, put it back in order And no one will always have this too oh, yeah. yeah, to me it's the same thing It's the F yeah. just has that little bit of that upper mid-range Interestingly thing. though, even though we slowed the attack down All three of them to 12 o'clock yeah. The D is still more aggressive on the compre still yeah. compressing more aggressively than right. the other two is. That's and, and, interesting. Yeah, we we said that on the I think on the keyboards is the piano as well is that the seventy six the it hits the transient a little bit. Sooner. Yeah, yeah, it it seems to be it's just a more aggressive compressor yeah. overall than the other two when when all when all settings being equal, you know. All settings being equal and uh, and according to the spec sheet the yeah. the range from attack and release from, are the same. Are the same. So yeah. you would think it would react the same, but that's got to do to some kind of the. Component could, yeah, it could be any kind of a, of, a, of a tolerance going on there, but that's but for or this particular unit, but whatever. But that's what I'm seeing right here. Yeah. Uh, but again, yeah, the F just has that projection to it that you yeah. want to give a lead vocal yeah. as compared to the other two. You know, I mean, the A still to me, I, I, I would still happily use the A on a vocal. You know, because like I tend to push, I tend to like to push some air into a vocal anyway. So I, I would mm -hmm. tend, I would use that A happily, but that F is, that's, that's, that's the sweet spot. for them. Yeah, it is. I like it. So it'd be interesting yeah. to know what you guys think below. So there it is. You got the three 1176 compressors by Audioscape. Again, all three of them are great. And every piece of gear that we've done so far with Audioscape has been a home run. They make really, really good stuff. So again, hit the link in the description box below if you want to check out what they got going on over at Audioscape. We don't get any kind of commissions or anything, whether you buy anything, we just want to help 
advertise the company because they've been very generous to us here and they make really, they do. They just make great products. Now the yes, thing about do. Audioscape, gotta remember, they don't always have a lot of stuff in stock. These are all built one at a time, handmade. Every single unit goes through. Chris, the owner himself, and he tests all the units by hand. So these things come in very small batches and he posts the, that information on his Instagram page and on their Facebook page. I think there's two days a week where they go on sale yeah. and you gotta be there with credit card in hand to get them. So if you want one of the 1176s, you may get a chance, there may be three or four or five of them built per week and that's it. And now with some of the uh, component and supply chain issues that we have going on throughout the world, those units may even be coming a little slower than normal, but every week they seem to build a few. So yeah. if you wanna check one out, go to their website and check them out. They're great people, um, small little mom and pop shop you know, type of a company. Everything is handmade, all made in the United States. All the components he tells me are sourced out of the US. So it's a really cool thing and they make great products. And as you heard, they sound good. I mean, they just sound good. You, yeah. We're, we're nitpicking this thing, yeah, but you, I mean, honestly, you could take any one of those and yeah. put it on anything in a mix and it would sound yeah. good. Yeah, none of them sound bad. It's no. just that they sound, they, they're giving you a different thing. My, my, the, the thing I would say about them too is like, in all it does not matter if which one you buy. I mean, you can always EQ the differences out to a certain degree yeah, if you true. need to. Right, of course. I mean, if you're, if, if you're looking for an 1176 style compressor, any one of these would be an amazing thing to have. Yeah, and an 1176 sounds good. I mean, we put it on three sources here, but I've used mm -hmm. it on bass and snares and anything fat is gonna sound really good. You really can't go wrong. It's why studios have usually a whole bucket of them yeah. because yeah. you know you can wanna put them on multiple sources because mm -hmm. they sound really cool. And what I like, cause I never would have thought having the three different versions of it, you know, prior to hooking up and meeting with Chris and Audioscape, you, I, you would think I'll just get a couple, three black faces, that'd be good. But it is yeah. kind of nice that they're, yeah. uh, they are slightly different. So when you sprinkle them around your mix, you get a little bit of a different character. Mm -hmm. You got something a little different. It's not yeah. exactly the same, which is really yeah. cool. And you, you can tune the compressor to what, you, to what you're looking for. Right. Like, like you said, like you put the F on a vocal, it projects the vocal out forward. You put the A on, on something that you want to brighten up. You put the D on something you want to warm up. Right. And that actually separates the tracks out in the mix even better because you're giving them slightly different flavors, even though right. they're being compressed at the same in the same style. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, check the links in the description box below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Let us know below what other kinds of gear demo and tests you'd like to see. We have a whole list of ideas, but we'd love to hear from you. So let us know below. And then once again, if you're... Find it in your heart to hit the thanks button. Give us an old thanks. Let us know that you appreciate what we do here. And until the next video, I've been Dave and he's been Dave yep. <laughs> with Mixing Music Analog and MixingMusicAnalog.com. Thanks so very much for watching, everybody. We'll see you soon. Take care, guys. Take care, guys.